Liberia's President Joseph Boakai declares drugs and substance abuse a public health emergency as he highlights the importance of the rule of law in his first State of the Nation address. Denise Nipsey has more. President Boakai, in his first State of the Nation address, says the country is in distress and that the proliferation of drug and substance abuse must be addressed. Several communities across the capital, Monrovia, and its environs report that scores of young people have died and continue to be affected due to the use of cooch and illicit form of the indica strain of cannabis. The drug epidemic, especially the use of cooch in our country, is a substantial threat, eating away the future of our children in the country. I am here by declaring drug and substance abuse as public health is invited. I am establishing multi-sectorial steering committee comprising the following agents. In this fight, me and my vice friend will be the first to take the drug test and I urge all others to follow me. In the message, they capture his administration's vision, agriculture, rules, rule of law, education, sanitation, and tourism are a rest for short. Boaka stressed the need for a lasting solution to economic instability and unemployment. We intend to change the state of economy by thinking outside of that. A paradigm shift away from reliance on our primary commodity exports to focusing on value addition with the private sector as the engine that drive the economy. Under my administration, the environment of the Liberian entrepreneurship through more support will help bring back the Made in Liberia quest and inclusive and sustainable growth and jobs. Meanwhile, President Boakai criticized the former administration's management of the economy. The report of US 40 million as the GOL's consolidated account balance as of January 3rd, 2019, 2024, is not supported by the fact. The balance reported by the CBL as of the same date was 20.5 million, highly incumbent, not 40 million. To this end, we will re emphasize our earlier commitment to audit across all branches of government, not only the executive. Anasi Meme is the executive director for the Center for Transparency and Accountability in Liberia. He is hopeful that President Boakai's promises will not be just mere talk. We can only hope that those things that he said uh, he would do, he would do, because we've seen people making promises over time, and in terms of fulfillment of those promises, it hasn't really been positive. But the president we've had before, the leaders we've had before. The president, we have, for example, made several promises to deal with corruption, prosecuting his officials and those accused of corruption. Some Liberians are disappointed the president did not address the establishment of a war and economic crimes court in his first State of the Nation address. They also hope he and his officials will declare their assets as soon as possible. For VOA's Daybreak Africa, I'm Denise Nipsey in Morovia, Liberia. Mali and Burkina Faso said Monday that they had sent ECOWAS a formal notice of their withdrawal from the West African bloc, with Niger expected to follow. The military regimes in all three countries had announced plans to withdraw from the West African bloc, accusing ECOWAS of posing a threat to their sovereignty. The Foreign Affairs Ministry in Mali showed French news agency the AFP a copy of the letter it sent to ECOWAS, while Burkina Faso's official news agency reported it had sent an official notice. No information emerged from Niger, but the statements from its two neighbors stressed the common character of their move. ECOWAS said earlier in a statement that it was awaiting formal and direct notification from the countries. Under the bloc's statute, withdrawal cannot take effect for at least a year after official notification. Regional powerhouse Nigeria issued a statement late Monday expressing sadness over the three countries' decision from the, of departure from the bloc, which it hosts.
A week ago, a juvie Uhuru Kenyatta, Kenya's former president, emerged from a Uganda Airlines plane at the Nijiri International Airport, Kinshasa, where he was traveling to attend the inauguration of DR Congo's President Felix Tshisekedi, who had won a second term in the December presidential election. When his media team shared the pictures on social media, there was a buzz with many wondering how the Kenyan leader was flying a foreign airline when there were several options including the Kenyan flag career. It turns out that he was offered a ride in the Ugandan career which also ferried the country's vice president, Jessica Arupur, who represented President Yoweri Museveni at the event. Later, his media team posted on his official ex handle The facilitator of the ESC-led Nairobi peace process, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, at the inauguration of His Excellency Felix Antoine Tshisekedi Chirombo at the Mata Stadium. Later, he called on President Tshisekedi at his official residence. The Palais de la Nation in Kinshasa. DRC, where he conveyed his congratulatory message and held discussions on matters of great concern to the people of DRC as well as the region. A route to Nairobi, the former president paid a courtesy call to His Excellency Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda.